Now in this video, let's talk about dynamic method dispatch. Now once we have went through what is polymorphism, we have also mentioned that it is same thing, multiple behavior, and we have two types of uh, polymorphism, which is compile time polymorphism, runtime polymorphism. Now to implement runtime polymorphism, let's try one more example here. And we do that with the help of dynamic method dispatch. Again, to keep it simple, we'll use a simple class like class A, and then we got class B, and let's say class B extends class A, okay, and let's say we have class C. And again, we have discussed most of the topics, so let's make it quick. So we got class C. So if you can see, we have class A, which is getting extended by B and C both. So you can say class A is parent, and we have two child there, one is B and one is C. Now what I will do is, in this A, I will create public void show, okay? And this show will print, let's say, in a show, okay? And we'll be using class C a bit later. As of now, let's only focus on class A and class B. Now my question to everyone is, I mean, okay, let's, let's remove this class C just to remove the confusion. Let's go step by step. So let's say we have these two classes, class B extends class A. Now my question to you is, how do I create an object of class B? And of course, we have talked about this from a long time. I can say bobj equal to new b, and that's how you get the object, right? And of course, using this obj, I can call show, there's no harm. Compile this code and run. You can see we got in a show. Now, this is how you create the object, right? Now, there's one more thing. Can I create a reference of a, an object of b? Is it possible? Since b, b extends a, so you can say b is a child of A. So can I refer this OBJ as A and the object of object is B? Now when you look at this OBJ, what is this OBJ? It's a variable, right? And what is a type of a variable? The type is A here, right? So the OBJ type is A, but the implementation is B. Okay, that's the point to remember. And this perfectly works. Now if you want to imagine this, let's, let's go with this one more example here, which I, which, I, which I will write here. Let's say if I create a class called computer, and of course class computer has some methods, okay? And then class laptop. And we all know that laptop is a computer. So I can also say laptop extends computer. Yeah, we can say that, right? And now, if I say laptop is a computer, if I want to create object of a laptop, of course, how will you do it? It's very simple. You will say laptop, let's say lap is equal to new laptop. So let's say instead of saying uh, lap, we say obj1, and then I can just call all the methods. But my question is, can I refer this obj1 as laptop? Yes, it is a type of laptop. And I can also say this is a computer. And that's what you do, right? When you look at the laptop, you can say, hey, that is a laptop, but that's also a computer. We are referring that as a computer. So we are referring this OBJ, which is an object, as a computer. But technically it's a laptop, right? In the same way, we can refer this OBJ of type A. So we can mention the type as parent, but the object can be of child, okay? So I've just created this laptop computer just to show you. Let me remove that. So yet it is possible to create a reference of a superclass and the object of a subclass. Okay, and this will surely work. Let's compile, there's no issue. Let's run, and you can see it says in A show. But the twist is, if I have the same method, and we have talked about this in method overriding, if I have the same method, and if I say this is in B show, now what it will call? Will it call in A show or in B show? As per the method overriding, it should call in B show, but look at the reference. Reference is of type A. That's tricky, right? Uh, let's try. In fact, what I will do now is just to, first let's run this code and I will show you something. You can see it says in B show. Let me initially set the object of A itself. And then let's go step by step. So I will say compile and run. It says in A show. In fact, I can call this OBJ show once more. But before calling OB OBJ show, what I will do is I will make one change here. I can just come back here and I can say OBJ is equal to new B. That's right. We can assign a new object to the old variable, okay? Now, if you want to understand this with a memory, of course, we have a stack here, right? In this stack, we have different variables, and then we have a heap memory here. Now, initially, when you say obj, that's your object, right? And it will create object of a. So, 101 is object of a. I'm talking about line number 24. Okay, line number 24, we have this line. So, that's an object here, and it will have some methods. The method name is show itself, right? 
And this will have a value which is 101. So I'm talking about line number 24, okay? And on 24, this is a link. Now, when you say obj.show line number 25, obj.show, at that point, it will look, okay, so obj.show, that means I have to call the show method of object A. So this, my friend, is an object of A. And now, on line number 28, we made some changes. That is, now this particular object is referring to the object of B. So we got one more object here, which is, let's say, 103. And this is an object of B now. Okay, this will also have a show method because that is what we mentioned there. And now, since we are changing the value here, this will be replaced by 103. There is no 101 anymore. That means this link, this link is broken and we got a new link. Now on line number 29, when you say obj.show, it will call the show method of B. So it's not about what is a type of the object or reference. You can say type is still A, but the object is B. And that's what you will call the B show. Let me compile and run. You can see at first for this line, it is printing in A show. For this line, it is printing in B show. Likewise, if I create another class here, class C, which extends A, and if I have the same method, I will just reuse my own code. And if I say this is in C show, what will happen? If I create, if I just go back here and say obj equal to new C, and if I say obj.show, what do you think what will happen if I run the for the third time? And that's of course, right? Different object will have a different behavior. Remember runtime polymorphism? And you can see we got in C show. So the same object, which is obj.show, is behaving differently with different objects. Polymorphism, right? So if you say obj.show, we are not even sure. So when you compile this code, at that point, we are not sure obj.show will call which method of, of which class. I mean, method of which class. It will be decided at runtime. And that's what is called runtime polymorphism. And all this concept is called dynamic method dispatch because that's dynamic. Which method will it will call, we are not sure. Okay, and that's how it works. So point to remember here is, irrespective of what type of object you have, or what type of variable you create, is it type, it's of type A, but it all depends upon what object you have. And it is only possible when you have inheritance, okay? You can't simply say we are creating a new class, class D, and uh, you will say, okay, uh, not demo, class D, and you can't simply go back here and say obj, equal to new D. This will not work because D is not extending A. If you can see, if you can verify, D is not extending A. So this will not work. This will only work when you have inheritance. So only you can have a child objects for the parent variable, which is A OBJ, parent type variable. So yeah, that's it from this video where we talked about dynamic method dispatch, which is a runtime polymorphism.